Yeah, so in today's topic, we'll be discussing about the chemical coordination and integration and introduction of, to this particular topic. Okay, so in the backdrop slide, you can see that this is the pituitary gland. Okay, so the hypothalamus is uh, below the hypothalamus, there is the pituitary gland, which is found in the cella tersica of the skull. So the pituitary gland is considered to be the master gland. So which secretes hormones that stimulates other glands to secrete hormones. So the pituitary gland is considered to be the master gland. So the pituitary gland has lobes. So the anterior lobe, we call it as adenohypophosis. The posterior lobe, we call it as neurohypophysis. So neurohypophysis, they are going to secrete. All this you might have studied in your high school also. So neurohypophysis, they are going to store two hormones that is the pregnancy hormone that is oxytocin and the antidiuretic hormone or we also call it as vasopressin so adh or vasopressin which helps the kidneys in reabsorption of water okay so these two hormones are stored in the neurohypophysis so the adenohypophysis has different types of hormone like somatotrophic hormone follicle stimulating hormone uh, the uh, gonadotropic hormone, interstitial cell stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. So they're all secreted by these anterior lobe of this pituitary gland. The posterior lobe only uh, they are reservoir for this two hormones that is oxytocin, the pregnancy hormone. And uh, there is the another hormone that we call it as the ADH, antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. So this hormone helps in reabsorption of water in the kidneys, okay? So there are also the thyroid glands, parathyroid glands. Uh, then there is uh, there are hormones like the above the kidneys, you have this adrenal glands, as the name indicates, adrenal glands. Then the pancreas are heterocline glands. They are also having endocrine glands especially the islets of Langer hands. So they have this alpha and beta cells, okay? The alpha cells, they secrete the uh, glucagon, the beta cells secrete the insulin. Delta cells, their exact function is not known. So the uh, testis in case of male, they also secrete the hormones. The ovaries also secrete the hormones. So these hormone harmony is responsible for a normal functioning. So if the hormones either increase or there is a deficiency, it causes an imbalance in us. So the hormone harmony has to be there. You know the definition of hormone, isn't it? Hormones are chemical messengers which are secreted at one part of the body, which has in minute uh, amount they are secreted, like parts per million. Okay, hormones are secreted in very small amount and it has its effect at the target region, not at the secretion region. It has its effect at the target region. So these are some of the things that you already know about. So hormones are secreted by endocrine glands. So endocrine glands, they are secreting hormones. So endocrine glands are also called as ductless glands. So hormones are carried by the blood. So hormones are directly secreted into the blood because they are ductless glands, endocrine glands are ductless glands and they are carried by the blood. So these, this is the part that you have to understand about the hormones and how their harmony is very important. If they are under secreted or over secreted, there is going to be imbalance. So if they are uh, secreted in less amount hormones, we call it as hyposecretion. If they are secreted in more amount, we call it as hypersecretion. So these secretions, uh, if they are normal, so the activities and the metabolic activities, they are all going to be normal. If there is lesser secretion or higher secretions, there are uh, various disorders that we'll be studying about it, okay? So the complete from our uh, control of our body, secretion of the enzymes, they're all controlled by these hormones. So our growth, uh, the amount of thyroid that is secreted today, uh, we are very much aware about the thyroid uh, factors, the hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, we are very much aware about it. 
okay so all these understanding has helped us uh, to resolve many of the issues that we come across so there is hormonal therapy also at present so which many of the endocrinologists would suggest okay in case it is required so let us proceed with understanding the topic of the chemical coordination in the previous topic we had studied about neural coordination here it is chemical coordination and integration so how they are uh, working as a team for the normal functioning of our body so we are going to understand about this chemical coordination and integration So the endocrine system, it includes endocrine glands and their secretions. Endocrine glands are ductless glands. It includes endocrine glands and their secretions, that is hormones. Hormones are non-nutrient chemicals that act as intercellular messengers and are produced in trace amounts, very, very less amount. So the hormones are uh, non-nutrient chemicals that act as intercellular messengers. See, hormones are chemical messengers I told you about. So they are intercellular chemical messengers and they are produced in very less amount or trace amount. So you can see the pituitary glands. Okay, uh, then there is uh, the thyroid glands, adrenal glands. Okay, so the uh, testes so which also are secreting it the pancreas the pancreatic uh, uh, secretions from highlights of langer hands that is the hormones glucagon and insulin okay so the hormones are non-nutrient chemicals they act as intercellular messengers and they are produced in very less amount that is why we call it as trace amounts in plants also we had discussed about hormones so generally we use ppm parts per million okay one part in million parts of it and the hormones are conveyed by the blood so they are hormones are conveyed by the blood and the effect of hormones are at the target regions so human endocrine glands, so we have the hypothalamus, okay, which secretes this oxytocin, antidiuretic human uh, hormone, ADH. So the pituitary gland, so I had already told you, this is the master gland, okay, the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, pineal gland, okay, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, thymus gland, okay. So then adrenal gland, above the kidneys the cap shape structure is nothing but adrenal adrenal so above the kidneys adrenal glands okay pancreas they are also going to secrete from the islets of langerhans the alpha cell and beta cells alpha cell secretes glucagon beta cell secretes insulin the gonads they are also going to secrete the hormones they are all endocrine glands so ovary is a, a gonad okay the testis is the so they are all going to secrete hormones. So the hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal gland, okay, then thyroid, parathyroid, then uh, thyroid, then there is the parathyroid, and uh, hypothymus. They also secrete the endocrine secretions. Adrenal above the kidneys, we call it as adrenal glands. Uh, so the kidney above the kidneys, it is adrenal glands, cap shaped structure. The pancreas, they are going to secrete secretions, the ovary and testis, they are also going to secrete the secretions, uterus. So they are the other parts of it, but the endocrine glands are these. So what I have listed here, hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal glands or pineal glands, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, uh, then adrenal glands, pancreas, and gonads. So these are the endocrine glands that we have. So first we'll discuss about the hypothalamus region. Below the thalamus, they are present the hypothalamus. They are neurosecretory cells, nuclei of hypothalami. They secrete the following types of hormones. So the releasing hormones, inhibiting hormones, oxytocin and vasopressin. See, the hypothalamus secretes oxytocin and vasopressin, which is stored in the posterior part of the pituitary gland. So that is why I told you the uh, neurohypophysis, 
or posterior part of the pituitary gland. It is a reservoir for secretions of hypothalamus. That is oxytocin and vasopressin, which are secreted in hypothalamus. They are stored in the, uh, the neurohypophysis or posterior part of pituitary glands. So the hypothalamus is a neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus, which secrete the following type of hormones. So they secrete releasing hormones and inhibiting hormones, which prevent certain activities. They also secrete oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin is the pregnancy hormone and vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, you already know, they help in reabsorption of water from kidneys. So the releasing hormones, of the hypothalamus they are going to stimulate secretion of pituitary hormones so the releasing hormones from the hypothalamus they are going to stimulate the secretion of pituitary hormones example gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates release of gonadotropins from pituitary so the releasing hormones they are going to stimulate the secretion of pituitary hormones example GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone, stimulate the release of gonadotropins from pituitary. The inhibiting hormones, they prevent secretions or they stop secretions. Inhibit secretion of pituitary hormones. That is what is being done by the hypothalamus inhibiting hormones. So they inhibit secretion of pituitary hormones. Example, somatostatin inhibits the release of growth hormone from pituitary the somatostatin from the hypothalamus so this inhibiting hormone inhibits the release of uh, the growth hormone from the pituitary so oxytocin and vasopressin these are transported axonally and stored in the posterior lobe of pituitary that is neurohypophysis they are stored in So next that we are going to discuss about is the pituitary gland. It is located in a bony cavity in the skull. So it is located, pituitary gland is located in a bony cavity in the skull called as cella tersica. It is attached to hypothalamus. See this pituitary gland, it is a P-shaped structure. So it is attached to hypothalamus by a stalk. So the pituitary gland is attached to hypothalamus by a stalk, okay? So this we call it as the infundibulum. So they are found in the uh, cella tersica of spinoid bone. So they are found in a uh, cavity of the skull that is the cella tersica is found in the spinoid bone. So the cavity of the sp uh, spinoid bone, we call it as cella tersica where the pituitary gland is seen. It is located in a bony cavity, in a spinoid bony cavity called cella tersica. Okay, so the they have different regions in them. So the anterior pituitary has three things: the pars tuberalis. So I remember it as TID. Okay, pars tuberalis, pars intermedia, pars distalis. So these are the three lobes, three regions of this anterior anterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary is just the infundibular stalk and pars nervosa. So the infundibular stalk and pars nervosa, they represent the uh, posterior pituitary. So TID or DIT, however you can remember it as pars tuberalis, pars intermedia, pars distalis. So the pituitary, posterior part of pituitary gland consists of the infundibular stalk and pars nervosa. So this is what you can uh, notice in the pituitary gland and the structure of pituitary gland. So the parts of pituitary gland are adenohypophysis, or we also call it as anterior pituitary. So the neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary. So the anterior pituitary, we call it as adenohypophysis. The posterior pituitary, we call it as neurohypophysis. So in the neurohypophysis, oxytocin and ADH antidiuretic hormone are stored here in neurohypophysis. So they have the infundibular stalk and pars uh, nervosa. So they are the two parts of the neurohypophysis. So whereas the antinohypophysis, it is made up of TID, pars tuberalis, 
parse intermedia, parse distalis. Okay, but in your book, they have given only two parts to be studied, parse distalis and parse intermedia. See these three parts together. So pass tuberalis, pass intermedia, pass distalis, so TID. So uh, they are the anterior lobe of pituitary gland. Okay, adenohypophysis of the pituitary gland. So the pass distalis, so the hormones that are secreted by this pass distalis, it produces the following hormones. Somatotropin or growth hormone, okay, is GH prolactin hormone it is secreted by them then tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone they are all stimulating those hormones to secrete them okay adrenocorticotrophic hormone acth then follicle stimulating hormone fsh luteinizing hormone so the six hormones are secreted by this pars distalis so pars distalis is going to secrete the growth hormone or somatotrophic hormone gh or sth it is called as prolactin prl hormone then thyroid stimulating hormone tsh adrenocortic corticotrophic hormone acth follicle stimulating hormone fsh and luteinizing hormone LH. So the pars distalis secretes the major uh, six types of uh, hormones are secreted by this pars distalis. So when we uh, study this somatotrophin, the pars distalis, somatotrophin or growth hormone. So jayjantism. So here the example of the tallest man, okay, on earth and the shortest man on earth. So Sultan Kosser. Is eight feet one inches, so he's eight feet and one inch tall. Dwarfism, uh, probably a Chinese he ping ping, so he's two feet uh, five inches, 5.37 inch, two feet 5.37 inch. So the tallest and shortest man. So dwarfism and gigantism. So gigantic personality is because of over secretion of this growth hormone. So somatotrophin or growth hormone is hyper secretion of it. This dwarfism is a hypo secretion result of it. So you can understand how normal growth can uh, take place by the normal secretion of uh, these hormone and uh, abnormal secretion, either too much or too little. So they lead to abnormality. Like gigantism is because of over secretion of this growth hormone. Under secretion or hypo secretion of growth hormone leads to dwarfism. So the somatotropin or growth hormone, so GH for body growth. So you require this growth hormone, especially at this age. So you'll be, uh, you should be happy with whatever hormone that the growth hormone that you have. So most of the time, the growth is also based on the genes that you have inherited, okay? And uh, so your parents, their height, or your grandparents, sometimes you inherit the traits of your grandparents. If they are very tall, you would also be very tall. If they are not, uh, see in the South Indians, uh, women being around five to 5.3 feet is a normal height. But in European standards, it might be lower you might be shorter and men being 5.5 5.6 in south indian uh, genes so that is a normal trait okay but maybe in the north india the height might be 5.9 or um, greater than that 5.7 to greater than that so the those genes of this differ or uh, the others, the Europeans, we can take rather than comparing ourselves to Indians, not much of difference. So, but in European standards, most of them are above uh, 5.8 feet. Uh, so they are uh, below that, they are generally considered to be short. So the genes also play a role here. If you go to Japan, much more shorter people are there. What matters is your uh, virtues and traits and not your height. So Lal Bahadur Shastri was a very short person. Okay, he was not having muscles or any, uh, uh, but his will and determination mattered. Okay, he was what he was because of his strong will and determination. So even uh, uh, 
Napoleon Bonaparte, he was considered, I think he was around 5.3 feet. So from European standards, he was very short, but he was able to lead a, a very huge army. Okay, so and he was a greatest conqueror, isn't it? Napoleon Bonaparte. So height doesn't matter much. It's just about what we have inherited. We are going to uh, have those. Okay, sometimes there might be abnormalities like very little amount of this growth hormone might be secreted or huge amount of growth hormone might be secreted. So that they are abnormalities like gigantism and dwarfism. So generally people who are very tall, so the development of mental faculty development is not much of uh, um, mental development faculties are not there much. Okay, so uh, let us study about this. For body growth, we require this growth hormone, normal secretion of it. Over secretion of growth hormone causes gigantism, that is abnormal growth, hyposecretion. So this is hypersecretion. This is hyposecretion of growth hormone, that is less secretion of growth hormone. They cause dwarfism or stunted growth. Okay. See, over secretion of growth hormone in adults, mainly in middle age, if there is a over secretion of growth hormone in adults in the middle age, it causes acromegaly. So the severe disfigurement. So you can see this acromegaly in these individuals. So severe disfigurement, especially of face. Okay. It leads to serious complications and premature death. So this you can acromegaly, we call it as. So over secretion of growth hormone, if it takes at adult conditions, so when they are adults, when there is a over secretion of growth hormone, mainly in middle age, it causes acromegaly, the severe disfigurement, especially of face. It leads to serious complications and premature death. So early diagnosis of the disease is difficult. It may be undetected for many years the sacromegaly might remain undetected for many years okay the next hormone is prolactin prl so they regulate the growth of mammary glands and milk production see we uh, human beings we belong under uh, mammalia class mammalia brush feeding animals so the young ones are nourished by the breast milk, isn't it? So the prolactin hormone uh, in human beings, they regulate growth of mammary glands and milk production is regulated by this prolactin hormone. See, every activity of our body is regulated by these different hormones. That is why I said there should be a hormone harmony. Okay, so prolactin or PRL, they regulate the growth of mammary glands and milk production. So the next one is thyroid stimulating hormone. So TSH. So this stimulates the secretion of thyroid hormones from thyroid gland. Okay, they are going to stimulate the secretion of thyroid hormones from thyroid gland. Okay, so the adrenocorticotrophic hormones, the adrenal gland are found above the uh, kidneys. So they have this adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. So the adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH from past distalis, they stimulate the synthesis and secretion of steroid hormones, that is glucocorticoids from adrenal cortex. So ACTH uh, stimulates the synthesis and secretion of the steroid hormones or glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. So that is the role of ACTH. The follicle stimulating hormone. So it stimulates the gonadal activity. In males, FSH, that is follicle stimulating hormone and androgens, they regulate the sperm formation, that is spermatogenesis. In females, FSH stimulates the growth and development of the ovarian follicles. So the ovarian follicles, they are going to develop and mature to form the graphian follicle. So the mature follicle, we also call it as graphian follicle and they rupture and release the uh, ovum. So this ovum is, uh, they are ruptured and release the ovum, which is the menstrual cycle, the ovulation, pre-ovulation, ovulation and post-ovulation phases are there. So the uh, every uh, 28 days once there's a, 
uh, menstrual cycle. So if the uh, on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle, so there is the liberation of this on the 14th day of the uh, ovulation cycle, not menstrual cycle, you should call it as ovulation cycle. So the uh, ovum is released. If it is not fertilized, so they are going to degenerate and they are thrown out of the body during menses. Okay, and uh, menstruation, they are thrown out the unfertilized egg cell. So the corpus luteum, uh, they would have modified into uh, the corpus uh, luteum so the graphene follicle would have modified themselves as corpus luteum and they secrete hormones in case the ovum is fertilized if not they are going to degenerate so this is what is the things that are happening so during the ovulation process so there is uh, the in females follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the growth and development of the ovarian follicles so to form the mature graphene follicle Okay, so this details of spermatogenesis and oogenesis you'll be studying in the 12th standard in detail. At present, it's not much required. Just know that the maturation, growth and development of the ovarian follicles is in females is because of uh, follicle stimulating hormone. So in males, FSH and androgens, they regulate the formation of sperms or spermatogenesis. So the luteinizing hormone, LH, hormone they stimulate gonadal activity in males it is going to stimulate the synthesis and secretion of androgens from testis so in males they are going to synthesis and secretion of androgens from the uh, testis is because of this luteinizing hormone in females it induces ovulation and maintains the corpus luteum Okay, it induces the ovulation and maintains the corpus luteum. So the uh, luteinizing hormone in females, they are going to induce the ovulation, that is liberation of ovum, and uh, they maintain the corpus luteum. Okay, the graphene follicle, which has liberated the egg cell, so they are maintained as the corpus luteum. The next part of this is pars intermedium. In human beings, it is almost merged with pars distalis. So we spoke about pars distalis and pars intermediate. It is almost pars intermedia is almost merged with pars distalis. It produces one hormone, MSH. We call it as melanocyte stimulating hormone. So MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, acts on melanocytes to regulate the skin pigmentation. So the skin pigmentation. Uh, that is the uh, melanin distribution. So they are being regulated by this MSH. So MSH acts on melanocytes to regulate the skin pigmentation. That is the role of melanocyte stimulating hormone. So if you are very fair, so you have less amount of melanin. If you are dark, you have more amount of melanin pigment. So uh, in nature, the presence of melanin and absence of melanin is for the, uh, as per the environmental conditions. In hotter uh, conditions, in the tropical regions, you find more dark skinned people. So they can withstand the high uh, temperatures of the sun and the melanin pigment is helpful for them. So they have more melanin pigment. Whereas in the uh, other countries, the uh, tropical regions and other countries, so you find uh, the light skinned or fair skinned people would be more because melanin pigment is not required much in such uh, climatic conditions. So environment also determines uh, that in the hotter regions, people have more of melanin pigment and in the colder regions, they have lesser number of melanin pigment. So uh, the skin color shouldn't be much of importance for us. Again, we have inherited from it. So there is uh, the melanin pigment and its distribution is we have inherited from our parents, our ancestry, the environment also determines the melanin pigment uh, distribution. Okay, so either we are below poverty line in melanin or we are very rich in melanin pigment or moderate distribution of melanin pigment. So MSH acts on the melanocyte stimulating uh, hormone acts on melanocytes to regulate the skin pigmentation. 
okay so this is the only role of pars intermedia next neurohypophysis so neurohypophysis it stores oxytocin and vasopressin it is secreted by hypothalamus so these two hormones but they are stored by uh, the uh, uh, what you call it as the uh, hypothalamus they secreted but they are stored in the uh, neurohypophysis or the uh, posterior lobe of pituitary gland so oxytocin they contract the smooth muscles so oxytocin they contract the smooth muscles in females it stimulates the contraction of uterus at the time of childbirth okay so at the time of childbirth so it stimulates so the parturition okay so in female it stimulates the contraction of uterus at the time of childbirth or parturition okay giving birth to young one it stimulates the uh, uterus at the time of childbirth so it helps in contraction of uterus at uh, the time of childbirth so the oxytocin that is their role and also milk ejection from the mammary glands okay so the milk uh, releasing from the mammary glands is also stimulated by the oxytocin okay so that is the role of oxytocin oxytocin contracts the smooth muscle oxytocin uh, stimulates so it is also called as pregnancy hormone i told you oxytocin stimulates the uh, contraction of uterus so they stimulate the contraction of uterus at the time of parturition or giving birth to uh, young one so at the time of childbirth or parturition so the oxytocin stimulates the uh, muscles contraction of uterus so muscles of contraction of uterus at the time of childbirth and milk release from the mammary gland so this is being done by the oxytocin hormone so the vasopressin or anti diuretic hormone so they are going to lead to stimulate the reabsorption of water and electrolytes so the adh in the kidney anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin so they are going to stimulate the reabsorption of water and electrolytes by distal convoluted dct so by distal convoluted tubule of kidney they are going to stimulate the reabsorption of water and electrolyte and thereby reduce diuresis diuresis is loss of water through urine excess loss of water through urine we call it as diuresis so the reabsorption of water and electrolytes at dct by a distal convoluted tubule is brought about by vasopressin or anti diuretic hormone so deficiency of anti diuretic hormone adh it leads to diabetes insipidus diabetes mellitus is because of deficiency of insulin hormone diabetes insipidus is due to deficiency of vasopressin or anti diuretic hormone so whenever there is deficiency of adh or vasopressin it leads to excess loss of water uh, during the urination process in diabetes mellitus it is concentrated urine in case of diabetes insipidus it is dilute urine so excess water loss takes place deficiency of adh results in diminished ability or decreased ability of the kidney to conserve water leading to water loss and dehydration so this is called as diabetes insipidus so diabetes insipidus is equally uh, as uh, as much uh, lethal as that of diabetes mellitus so the next and the last part that we'll discuss for today is the pineal gland smallest endocrine gland so you might be asked which is the smallest endocrine gland so it is the pineal gland so located on the dorsal side of forebrain okay so the pineal gland is the smallest endocrine gland it is located on the dorsal side of the forebrain so it secretes melatonin so pineal gland secretes melatonin so the function of melatonin is it regulates diurnal that is 24 hour rhythm of our body example sleep wake cycle body temperature they are all regulated by this pineal gland okay i think uh, uh, don't yeah fine 
So the functions of melatonin, what you can notice is uh, there is going to be the, uh, I've told you that pineal gland this is the smallest endocrine gland. So the uh, location on dorsal side of forebrain, you can notice that this is where the pineal gland is located. It secretes melatonin. So the function of melatonin is it regulates the diurnal rhythm of our body, the sleep-wake pattern cycle. So don't spoil the cycle playing games or being addicted to games or watching internet for long duration. Don't spoil this diurnal rhythm of body. Okay, for us to be healthy and all our metabolic activities to be uh, functioning well, the sleep wake cycle should be in a proper rhythm. So it regulates the diurnal rhythm of body sleep wake cycle. Then body temperature is also regulated by this uh, melatonin. So it influences the metabolism, pigmentation and menstrual cycle. So the melatonin it uh, influences not only influences the diurnal rhythm of our body but it also influences metabolism pigmentation and menstrual cycle so sometimes the menstrual, menstrual cycle might get delayed it might be more than the 28 day period so they are all might be because of the disturbance in the melatonin okay the influences melatonin influences metabolism Pigmentation also is influenced by melatonin and menstrual cycle is also influenced by melatonin, which is secreted by the smallest gland that is the pineal gland. So the uh, melatonin also influences our defense capability. Okay, so the melatonin also influences our defense capability. Okay, then uh, the thyroid gland, the largest endocrine gland. So we'll be just having this last part for today's discussion. The thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland. Okay. So the largest endocrine gland, it includes two lobes. So the thyroid glands includes two lobes located on either side of the trachea. The lobes are interconnected with isthmus. So these are the thyroid lobes the, on either side of the trachea they are uh, found so the lobes are interconnected with isthmus or a connective tissue so the lobes are in interconnected by isthmus or connective tissue so they are found on either side of the trachea the lobes are interconnected by the connective tissue or isthmus okay the thyroid gland is composed of follicles and stromal tissues so they are composed of follicles and stromal tissue Okay, so you can notice this follow the follicles. So the thyroid glands are uh, composed of uh, the follicle tissue and stromal tissues. Okay, so the thyroid gland is composed of follicles and stromal tissue. So they have these lobes, two lobes located on either side of the trachea. So the lobes are interconnected with isthmus, which is a connective tissue. And thyroid gland is composed of follicles and stromal tissues. So the follicular cells, they are going to secrete the following hormones. So the follicular cells secrete the following hormone that is thyroxin. So that is tetra iodothyronine, they, which we call it as T4 thyroxin and triodothyronine T3. So tetra is T4, thyroxin is T4. So the tetra iodothyronine, so that is T4 tetra it is so you can easily understand the t4 it is thyroxin so tetra iodothyronine and tri iodothyronine is t3 so then thyrocalcitonin tct so these are all the follicular secretes these hormone so t4 t3 tetra iodothyronine t3 is tri iodothyronine then tct is thyrocalcitonin so thyrocalcitonin so the thyroxin that is the tetra iodothyronine t4 and tri iodothyronine t3 so their functions is regulation of basic metabolic rate bmr so the regulation of basic metabolic rate is by this thyroxin so the physical mental and sexual development is by this thyroxin hormone so the regulation of basal metabolic rate bmr is by this thyroxin and t3 so thyroxin is tetra iodothyronine t4 we call it as and uh, tri iodothyronine is t3 
so they are going to their major function is uh, regulation of basic metabolic rate bmr physical mental and sexual development is by this thyroxine so the functions of this uh, thyroxine and thyroid thyronine regulation of basic mental rate uh, basal metabolic rate physical mental and sexual de development the support of rbc formation controls the metabolism of carbohydrate protein and fat so this thyroxine controls the metabolism of carbohydrate proteins and fats they also maintain water and electrolyte balance so thyroxine also maintains t4 and t3 they maintain water and electrolyte balance so the second part of that is thyrocalcitonin tct it is a protein hormone so thyrocalcitonin tct is a protein hormone it regulates or lowers the blood calcium level so it regulates or lowers the blood calcium level okay so that is the thyrocalcitonin it regulates the blood calcium level iodine is essential for normal hormone synthesis in thyroid so iodine is essential for the normal uh, iodine synthesis in thyroid the normal hormone synthesis in thyroid you require this iodine so the hypothyroidism so enlargement of thyroid gland due to deficiency of iodine we call it as hypothyroidism goiter in adult women it causes irregular menstrual cycle hypothyroidism during pregnancy affects the baby causing stunted growth or cretinism so mental retardation low intelligence quotient low iq abnormal skin deaf mutism mutism say so they are all the result of this hypothyroidism so the hypothyroidism during pregnancy they affect the baby causing stunted growth we call it as cretinism mental retardation low intelligence quotient low iq abnormal skin deaf mutism see just one deficiency of iodine how much it leads to so iodine rich foods are yogurt mozza mozzarella milk eggs seaweed cranberries uh, the navy beans strawberries they are all rich source of iodine but deficiency of iodine it leads to so much of abnormalities so especially in uh, third world as well in as well as india there are many people who are malnourished not in the rural in the urban places maybe in the rural places there are large amount of this sort of malnourishment the deficiency of iodine so it causes the enlargement of the thyroid gland which we call it as hypothyroidism so enlargement of thyroid gland due to deficiency of iodine in adult women this deficiency of iodine it or hypothyroidism it causes irregular menstrual cycle okay hypothyroidism during pregnancy they affect the baby causing stunted growth that is cretinism mental retardation okay then low intelligence quotient abnormal skin deaf mutism so low intelligence quotient abnormal skin and deaf mutism so they are all because of hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism excess uh thyroid uh, abnormal increase of thyroid hormones results in adverse effects on the physiological activities i told you that deficiency is also an abnormality uh, low secretion high secretion is also over secretion is also an abnormality this is hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism there is an abnormal increase of thyroid hormones resulting in adverse effect on the physiological activities it is caused due to the development of nodules or the cancer of uh, the thyroid gland so it is caused due to the development of nodules or the uh, cancer of thyroid glands so exothalamic goiter or graves disease it is a form of 
hyperthyroidism so exothalamic goiter or graves disease it is a form of hyperthyroidism symptoms are enlargement of thyroid gland so the enlargement of thyroid gland protrusion of eyeballs so you can see how much protruded the eyeballs are so exothalamic goiter these are the symptoms of it so increased basal metabolic rate and weight loss so the symptoms of this hyperthyroidism are enlargement of thyroid gland so then protrusion of eyeballs increased basal metabolic rate and weight loss in see increased basal metabolic rate and weight loss so this is the graves disease because of this exothalamic goiter so uh, the hypothyroidism is goiter simple goiter so the uh, exothalamic goiter is because of hyper secretion of the thyroid hormone okay it is a form of hyperthyroidism so we'll discuss about the parathyroid glands in the next class okay so any doubts or clarification dear students